Method two, story maps templates. This is the second method to create story maps. You're basically, you're downloading templates from storymaps.esri.com. Let me show you what one of those actually looks like. This particular one um, is one that uh, I built before I went to the European Association of Geographers Conference. And this is a, a story map. And as you can see, I also digitized areas. So I've got the harbor area. I've got some different things, the conference neighborhood, some more details. So every one of these things actually has uh, details with it. So here's my details. And then I actually link to a website for each one of these. In this case, Wikipedia about that neighborhood. Super. Now, this particular one, I've got a couple of things that I've digitized, notably this famous 800-year-old procession that took place during the conference that's been going on for, for uh, almost 1,000 years. And that was one of the reasons why they planned the conference, where and when it was held. Now, the nice thing about this kind of uh, story map is that as you zoom in, see how the, the pictures change on the left side? Depending on what you've got. So in, in it, in a, the same holds true with webcams. I've got a couple of webcams. Here's a webcam that is linked in there. Here's the website for that webcam. Now, how did we, it's probably dark there right now, right? This is in Belgium. Ah, yes it is. OK, super. So there's the webcam. How did I, how did I create this? Again, I went to storymaps.esri.com. See where it says download story templates on the right-hand side here? You've got some choices here. Mine, I obviously used the storytelling shortlist template. So you first, again, pre-planning is good. Figure out what kind of story you want to tell and what template here will help you tell that story best. There's a swipe, there's a compare, there's a bunch of things in here. I use this shortlist template. Now don't get, don't get nervous. You're going to download a big zip file. You being data people are used to doing that sort of thing. You'll get all kinds of files in there. The good news is that you actually don't need to do much with 95% of those files. They need to be there. They're the JavaScript files and other things that actually make that web page run. All you're doing is basically changing a little bit, like the index that age. Um, you're also indicating where you know that ID, the uh, ArcGIS online ID, you know how you get that long string with a map that you've got on ArcGIS online? You indicate which, which ID it is. And then you, once you tinker with a couple of files, you upload that whole group to your website. In this case, as you can see here, on this web address at the top, I've got it out on josephkursky.com, but you could have it on your school's website. You could have it on your organization's website. You could have it on whatever, your university's website. There's no end to what you can do. Now, these templates are, you saw there's about 12 of them there. But if you or your students know a little bit about JavaScript, you can customize these even further and create even cooler things than what I've showed you today. So there's two main ways, in sum, to create these. I just want to make sure that that was, that was uh, clear. First, ArcGIS Online, and you're basically publishing it to a web application. Second one, you're downloading the templates, and you're adjusting them a slight bit. Another thing to point out with the templates method is that I did create all of those points that you saw with the restaurants and the points of interest in Colorado or in Belgium. I actually created a CSV file. The CSV files contain the links to the photos and the information and the Wikipe uh, Wikipedia pages and other things. So again, it wasn't hard. It was just a matter of creating those CSVs. So you can see here that uh, in summary, what I'd say is that the bulk of the time creating story maps is really not the GIS part at all. The bulk of the time is figuring out where your photos are going to live and uploading your photos and you know that kind of stuff. It's not the GIS part. The GIS part is pretty darn easy. So I'm hoping that piques your interest anyway in two things, two really powerful things. The ESRI Maps for Office, mapping things in spreadsheets, and also creating these live PowerPoint slides.
And the second one is creating story maps. So does anybody have any comments, questions, complaints? 